Hello, everyone. Welcome to the third or fourth podcast episode. I I honestly don't know which one. I, I'm really bad at keeping track of it, even though I literally don't even have that many. Imagine how confused I'll be when I have like at least 10 of these. But anyway, if you're watching the video, you'll be able to see that I am working on some Percy Jackson fan art and you probably saw it in the title. But if you won't be watching the video and you'll only only be listening, then um, that, that's too bad then. But yeah, I am drawing some Percy Jackson fan art because I had the amazing opportunity to be included in a sapphic themed Percy Jackson zine. And if you don't know what a zine is, it's basically short for magazine. It's um, a collection of a bunch of digital artists who get together and draw things for a specific theme, usually for a franchise, and it gets printed out into its own physical book or what we call zines. And the one that this one is for is called Camp Sappho, which is basically a collection and a celebration of a bunch of sapphic pairings from the Percy Jackson series. It was so fun to work on and it's so great to just see like all these artists and moderators bond over which shippings they like of these girls. I think the most popular ship in the zine is Annabeth and Piper it seems to be the most popular one. But I got to draw Annabeth and Raina because if, if you don't know the series, you might not know that Raina's love life in the canon books isn't the best. And so I, I kind of felt bad for her. And I was thinking, like, what if she got with um, Annabeth? You know, and I was like, they would be cute together. Power couple. Hello. And so I drew them. And my original plan was actually to draw the girls from each camp with... Um, fashionable outfits uh according to the the colors of their camp so annabeth and piper would be wearing orange outfits and then hazel and reina would be wearing purple outfits but uh <laughs> i kind of like i ran out of creative juices and so i ended up um only finishing annabeth and reina and so you're going to be seeing me sketch out some of hazel and piper here I actually do it twice because I kind of struggled with drawing them for a little bit, but um, I was originally I was originally supposed to have a two page spread because I am a guest contributor, but I just ran out of time, and I got so stressed with a bunch of other stuff, so I, I I didn't end up finishing Hazel and Piper, and unfortunately, I had to just stick to one page, and so I'm just gonna have one page in the zine. So if you're interested in some Percy Jackson content and also some sapphic content, then I encourage you to go check out Camp Sappho's pre-order link in the description because they have a bunch of bundle options. You can get a $15 to $20 PDF of all the artwork and the zine itself is I think $20 to $30 and then the bigger bundles with all the merch and charms and stickers goes up to $55. So. If you're interested, please, please, please go check that out because you'll not only be supporting me, but you'll be supporting all these other artists that worked on this and writers and because there's some poems in there too. And you'll be supporting all the moderators who worked so hard to even make this possible. So please go check that out. It won't hurt. I promise. So for some life updates since the last podcast, which was the one with Carrie. Uh, since January, I closed my shop because I had to deal with like taxes, which is gross. So I'm not going to talk about that. But anyway, um, I finally got to the point where I was comfortable enough to reopen the shop. And so um, I made some Pokemon stickers, which are I'm really happy with how they turned out, honestly. And I made another sticker sheet and one more print. So if you're interested in that, also check out my shop link in the description. But it's just been really stressful, honestly, and I'm hoping that it could die down pretty soon. Um, like as I check off some stuff off my like, to-do list, because I have this problem now where it's so difficult for me to say no to sponsors. I miss when I first started this channel and it was just it just felt really nice to be able to sit down for an hour or 30 minutes and just talk about what I want. And so right now is my relaxed time. OK, like this podcast is my relaxed time. And I don't think I'm going to be putting music for this episode because it just feels like wrong to put music in a podcast because the, the ones that I listen to usually don't have music in them. 
And so I'm just going to stick to that, like what I did in the first episode. I'm just going to keep it no music. Plus, uh, I think it's just better for you to listen to your own music if you are interested in having some background noise. Because I, I feel like I'm really bad at like picking songs. And so I'd rather you listen to a song that you know you like than having to listen to like some song that I pick that you might not like. And so I think these podcasts are going to be no music from now on. And this video's topic is primarily going to be Percy Jackson, which I know isn't very art related, but I did make these podcasts for you to like get to know me outside of my art. And so I hope you guys are still interested in how I feel about Percy Jackson. Maybe you like Percy Jackson too, you know? So yeah, here I am talking about Percy Jackson for maybe an hour or so, and probably not the entire hour because honestly, I'll probably get off track and talk about other stuff too. But anyway, for now, let's just talk Percy Jackson. So I started reading it when I was around 10 years old, I think. I was either in fourth grade or fifth grade, and I want to say fifth grade because I don't think I was reading that many books in fourth grade, but um, the first book did come out in 2005, and so there's no way I could have read it when it first released because I was like five years old. I barely knew how to read, but um, I think the movie came out in 2010, and so there was kind of like a resurgence in the popularity of it within like schools and so of course me i am a nerd in fifth grade i went and i picked one of the books up and it, that's where it started my obsession and around that time too i was like so dramatic as a kid because i i remember thinking whoa i think the world is like pointing me to greek, greek mythology because at that time, I was 10 years old, and I just kind of started to get into uh, playing like video games. And I was playing, <laughs> sorry, I was playing Pop Tropica. And if you know Pop Tropica, you know that it was amazing for a 10 year old at that time in 2010. Okay. Pop Tropica was amazing. And uh, the Greek mythology island came out. I played the heck out of that. And then um, after I played that, I see on the TV that there is this movie called Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. And I was like, oh, what's this? Greek mythology? I just finished a Greek mythology Pop Tropica map. And now there's a movie out. And, you know... Considering it now, that's they probably came out at the same time because Pop Tropica was like, "Hey, this movie came out. Let us let's make a map about it too." But me as a kid, it was, I was I was thinking that it was fate, and so I watched the movie, and then I was like, "Ooh, Percy Jackson!" I remember seeing this at the library, and so I actually, like a, a true sinner, watched the bad movie before I read the good books. But after I read the books, I remember um, actually reading the first book and I was like, ooh, this happened in the movie, this happened in the movie, this happened in the movie. And uh, that's so like gross to think about now because it should be the other way around, right? And, and then I realized that the movie just is nothing like the books. After that, it became like an obsession and all my other classmates were really into it too because we were the gate kids. If you don't know what gate is, I think it's like, gifted and talented education i think was what, is what e stands for but it's g a t e and we're basically like the special advanced kids which now that i think about it, is such a toxic like thing to have in a school because what are all the other kids gonna feel like we're all like that's nerdy smart kids basically and we were all reading Percy Jackson and, and we would like talk about it like we were in a book club. But by the time seventh grade happened, I think like, you know, that's when puberty hit and like some people decide that they're too cool for books. And I think I was one of those people because uh, House of Hades came out and my best friend at the time got a hardcover version of the book. 
And we were all kind of just taking turns, like borrowing it from her. And when it came time for my turn, I think I read only a third of the book. And then I decided to give it back to her because I just wasn't interested in it enough. And that is just so sad. I really wish I never stopped reading them because to this day, I actually still don't know how Heroes of Olympus ended because um, I never finished House of Hades and I never even touched Blood of Olympus. Because recently I reread the series back in 2022 and for some reason I decided that I wanted to take a break from books again at literally the same exact spot that I stopped in seventh grade. I stopped right after reading Mark of Athena and as I was starting House of Hades. And by that time, I had already read like so many books in 2022 and I was kind of just like getting fatigued from reading. And so I was like, I need a break. And this whole like rereading happened because I started a booktube channel in 2022 after um, I got back into reading a lot after reading Bridgerton because I, I saw Bridgerton on Netflix and then I started seeing people talk about how this is an entire book series about a bunch of siblings who get their own love stories each book. And Bridgerton was meant to be like the same deal except seasons instead of books. And I was like, wait, that sounds completely amazing. And I love period romance. And so I went and uh, listened to the audiobooks and read the books. And then that just started a new obsession with historical romance and books in general. And my friend Kals, who I always, always talk about so much, Honestly, I'm, I'm thinking of getting her on one of these podcasts one day, but she asked if we could reread Percy Jackson together. And I was like, uh, let's do it. And so we did. She finished the entire series, but, um, you know, <laughs> I couldn't because I stopped after House of Hades. I actually made a video about it on my booktube channel when I first uh, finished Percy Jackson and the Olympians, the first series. And that is like so cringe to think about, to be honest. I went back recently to my booktube channel and I privated like a bunch of videos that I just felt so, so embarrassed about. They're just like so bad quality. Like the audio is terrible. Uh, the editing is pretty bad. And honestly, like the way I acted, it's... um. It's just embarrassing. I'm sorry. Like I get really nerdy about books and uh, I just think it's a like, cringy sometimes. And I also um, tried to make that channel into a reaction channel because uh, I would I really like to watch reaction channels uh, where people react to movies. They react to TV shows. I think it's just really fun to see what people think of movies on like their first time watching. And so after reading Percy Jackson, I was like, ooh, I should react to rewatching the Percy Jackson movies. And I also like completely forgot that there was a second movie, that they made a Sea of Monsters movie. And so that was really fun to like discover exactly how terrible and bad the movies are because they are bad. But they're like a funny type of bad. It's just really, really entertaining to kind of like make fun of how terrible they are and I made those into videos and I now I think they're cringy so I wiped them off the channel so if you ever find my booktube channel you're not going to find those videos anymore sorry sorry about it but during my reread uh, and I'm going to say now I'm going to put a warning at this point that I will be talking about spoilers so if you haven't finished the series or you care about hearing spoilers for a book series, then um, stop listening at this point. I might mark at um, which point I stop talking about spoilers, but okay, spoilers start here. When I reread the series, I was honestly very surprised at how much I enjoyed certain characters compared to how I felt about them when I was a kid. Because when I was like 10 to 14, I think, or 13, I found Tyson annoying because he was aloof and dumb, basically. And uh, I didn't care for a lot of characters other than Percy and Annabeth. But now as an adult, I discovered that 
Tyson is precious. Tyson is very lovable. And he needs to be protected at all costs. And he was in my top three favorite characters. He's just a gentle giant. How could you hate that? Anyway, I also found out that my number one favorite character turned out to be none other than Clarice. Because for some reason, from book one, even to when she bullied Percy, I absolutely loved Clarice because I remembered a lot of things about her. But I actually... um. I made a mistake remembering that she dies at the end, but then I was completely tricked because it wasn't her. The twist was that it was Selena dressed up as Clarice and not Clarice. But the reason why I love Clarice is that she just screams like anti-hero energy where she is very obviously, first and foremost, a bully, but she has her reasons as to why she is a bully. I just think she's a very misunderstood character who has a lot of internal problems because of her relationship with her godly parent, Ares, because Ares has set up these very unrealistic expectations of every single one of his children. And Clarice is a cabin leader. And so she feels like she has to meet all these expectations and she does try her best, but instead she just falls flat all the time and Um, By the end of the series, she has, like, a lot of character development. She has this friendship with Selena, which uh, inevitably saves the day at the end. And I think she even had a a little romance with uh, this guy named Chris that, if I remember correctly, saved them from... Or they saved from the labyrinth. But I just ended up really loving Clarice. The other character that I really liked was, of course... Rachel Elizabeth Dare, the kooky art kid. Of course, of course, I'm going to relate to her. But um, I just honestly like felt really bad that her and Percy ended up having this thing. And then it just couldn't work out. Like, because she ended up being the Oracle. But I love, love Rachel. She kind of reminds me of just like a very chaotic person. She's like unhinged, you know? So I love her, which is why I made a sticker of her. Then after I finished the first series, of course, I moved on to Heroes of Olympus, which is the second series where they're like older and they're teenagers. And around the time where I finished Mark of Athena, I decided very boldly that I wanted to create a three hour video explaining the plot line of the first two books. And I I did this because... Uh, it was around that time that I was watching Quentin Reviews and Jenny Nicholson, Mike Smike, and most of all, Carrie Can Read. So Quentin Reviews uh, and Jenny Nicholson, they do these really long videos where they just talk about anything and they do a lot of research on it. And I just find those really interesting to listen to. Carrie Can Read kind of did that with explaining the plot line of an SJ Mass book. I forget which one it was, but I think there might be like werewolves in it. I'm not sure. But it was like three, two hours long. And I was like, ooh, like, I don't think there's one for like Percy Jackson or Heroes of Olympus. So what if I made my own, you know? And and so I did. And it was a crazy journey. It was like a passion project. And it was very ambitious of me to do that. But I did do it. And, you know, I'm I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. I'm just kind of ashamed because looking back at it now, I definitely wasn't talking like myself. Because I was so influenced by Jenny Nicholson, I was talking like Jenny Nicholson. And so, like, I personally can't go and watch that video anymore because I'm just like, oh, my God. Like, I just I literally talked like, the exact way that Jenny Nicholson talked. Like, I just, like, copied her tone of voice. And I'm just, I find it so like embarrassingly like cringy. And I'm like, why was I trying to mimic her? But when I first posted it, I was really excited for people to watch it. But then it kind of flopped. It only got like maybe 500 views. But I think after the TV show was announced, um, Percy Jackson started to resurface. And then YouTube started recommending the video a lot more. And so at this moment, I think it has like 10K views. And I started to get like comments 
asking me to make a part two and I never did make a part two because I I just read Mark of Athena, but I never like moved on to House of Hades and Blood of Olympus. And so I was like, dang it, like now all these people want a part two and I kind of feel a bit obligated to give them a part two. And that channel is kind of dead. I've abandoned it. But I don't know. It seems like it would be a lot of fun now that people know me better to kind of just go for it. But also it's a lot of work. Like I'm going to have to probably reread Mark of Athena because I don't remember a lot of what happened or probably read like a Wikipedia summary of it. And then I have to write a script because it's kind of a video that warrants a script since, um, you know, I can't just literally take everything out of my mind because I'm going to need to get some things accurate. And I don't exactly have a wall that I can like thumbtack things to now because I live in an apartment. I, I don't exactly have a space to do that now, but I can probably figure that out. And also um, editing videos that long takes a lot of time and even just recording it and talking for like three hours takes a lot of time so you know there's a uh, there's a lot of work that goes into it but I think if a lot of people are interested in it then it could be it could be really worth it and it could also just be really fun in the end it could spark my um passion again for Percy Jackson and maybe it'll steer me into a direction where I actually want to finish House of Hades and Blood of Olympus and then move on to, I think there is like some other series. I think there's a Trials of Apollo, which honestly, I haven't really heard good things about, but I think Piper is in it. And so now I'm kind of stuck between like wanting to do it and not wanting to do it, if that makes sense, because it's a lot of work, but also it's pretty exciting to like think about like how how much people would like it this time around. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think because I think if I did make that video, um, it would probably be only Mark of Athena for now. But I would be forced to reveal what my booktube channel is because like I would want you guys to go check it out too. But um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm actually gonna do it because. My brain barely has the capacity to like manage this channel. So I don't I don't think I could handle like managing two channels, but we'll see. I also really want to actually finish my sketches that I have of the guys. Because if you've seen my art tour video, you've probably seen my sketches of Jason, Percy, Leo, and Frank. Unfortunately, I didn't draw Nico because I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of pressure in drawing Nico and I'm afraid to do it wrong. And so I haven't drawn Nico, but the sketches that I have of them, I am, I might show them on the screen here. I'm actually really proud of how they look because it was at a time where I was still pretty insecure about the way I drew guys. And I wasn't, and I'm not great at drawing fan art, but I was like, I really want to challenge myself and draw these dudes and see if I could actually do it. And I was really inspired by um, the Lynxies PJO fan art. And so I did it and I was like, whoa, I actually like the way they look, except for maybe Jason. I don't really like the way I drew Jason for some reason. But my plan with these is to actually finish them probably for a video and to turn them into stickers and sell them on my shop. Like probably a sticker sheet or single stickers, who knows. I've just never really gotten to doing it. I I keep forgetting about it, honestly. And when I haven't forgotten about it and it's on my mind, I just keep getting swamped by other work. And so I just like never really have enough time to just do these extra things that um, I've planned for a really long time. I also have another Percy Jackson fan art sketch or scrap that I never really finished. And I'll probably show it here on the screen again for a brief moment. My plan with this one was to create an entire page that kind of um, gave the vibe of like a, a, like a sticker page or a scrapbook page, but I kind of I think I was like way too ambitious when I did this and and it just like I don't know I wasn't confident enough to finish it 
And so I never did. And unfortunately, honestly, I don't think I will ever finish that. But I will include it into this little sketchbook project that I have going on at the moment, which I'm actually really excited to talk about. So um, I wanted to get into doing more personal design projects this year because the one I did back in October with like the Halloween designs was really, really fun. And it really let me know like, what I was capable of when it comes to designing, which is really encouraging because that's my dream is to become a character designer. And so I was thinking, I really want to challenge myself and design more characters, but it's a bit difficult to do that with the amount of work I have. And I'm kind of feeling like I need to finish everything I draw. And so I wanted to start like a sketchbook, but I'm just really not the type of person that can get into actually drawing in physical sketchbooks. And so I was like, what if I just drew like sketchbook pages digitally? And then once I have enough of them, I can print them out and turn them into like a physical book. Because I actually do know how to book bind now. And it could turn out really cool if I actually create enough pages. And so I started that and... I'm also the type of person that just has difficulty actually sketching things and just leaving them as they are because, because most of the time, let's say I'm sketching something for fun and then it ends up turning really good. I, I feel the need to like line it and color it and finish it and post it on social media because that is the type of mindset that I have right now is that I have to create content to post it. And so there's not a lot that I do that is literally just for myself and to just keep it like messy. And so I really want to challenge myself to have a book by the end of this year that is just like filled with my sketches and like actual sketches, not sketches that are meant to look perfect and aesthetic. And so far I've posted around three or four on my Patreon so for that personal project, I'm actually using it kind of as an outlet to do more studies and maybe even gesture drawings in the future. But yeah, I'm pretty excited to work on that some more. Maybe I'll even dedicate some pages to just like sketching Percy Jackson characters. Oh, and what I really want to do is starting to draw my historical romance characters or my alternate universe in that sketchbook. Because um, some of you might have seen like my alternate universe versions of Sydney, Isabella, and Jules in like historical romance, Regency attire, Victorian attire, whatever. Um, I still haven't decided like which actual time period I want to base it on. But I think I'm going to just uh, relish in the artistic freedom and kind of mix them all up together. I don't know. It just sounds like really fun. Like at the moment, I just feel really free to just do whatever I want in these sketches. Which is honestly the purpose of a sketchbook, right? Sometimes I feel like we see these sketchbook tours on YouTube and they just look so nice and perfect and really aesthetic that we feel like our sketchbooks have to look like that too. And I'd relate to like wanting our sketchbooks to look good. I'm not like blaming those artists at all because honestly with this one, I'm going to try to make them look good. but. For the most part, I still want them to be sketches. Like, I don't want them to be full-blown illustrations. And I don't think people should feel bad about purposely making their sketchbooks look good, too. Because it is your sketchbook. You could literally do whatever you want with it, as long as you're happy with it. So, if you want to make your sketchbook messy, or if you want it to look perfect and aesthetic, go for it, as long as it's what you want and you're not like getting pressured by social media to do like anything else with it. I just feel like some people feel bad about having messier sketchbooks and then others like guilt trip other people for wanting pretty sketchbooks and just let people be happy, you know, just let people be. Oh my god, what am I even talking about? I feel like I just went around in a circle. Like, what was the point of that? It, I, I think it, at first it sounded like I was trying to argue that, like, we should all have messy sketchbooks. But then I, like, 
twisted it into also arguing for pretty sketchbook i don't even know what my like i don't i don't know what my brain is doing to me right now this is what happens when i talk for a really long time and i just realized that i'm not even talking about percy jackson anymore so the title of this video is a lie but i think i'm like halfway through the podcast now and um you know what let's just talk about more video ideas so lately, I actually started looking through my videos again because I've I've kind of been discouraged with like um, YouTube slowness, I guess, because uh, people have told me that the first quarter of the year, like January to like maybe April or something is really slow on YouTube. Views go down, um, ads start paying less, and just in general, I think everyone struggles to get more engagement on YouTube in this time. And um, it's like my first time experiencing this. So it's uh, it's easy to feel like it's my fault. I'm like, is it me? Oh, no. Like, what am I doing wrong? Like, why are my views really low lately? And so I started looking at my most popular videos. And and I think at the moment, my most viewed one is my coloring process. And it makes me want to do kind of small tutorials, which is really odd because I've never like ever wanted to do tutorials like I've always told myself that I'm really bad at explaining stuff and that I'm not a very good teacher and so I'm just like whoa like I actually want to do tutorials now or maybe like um like a design a character type thing where I put together a mood board and maybe we just all like get together and design our own characters from that mood board and I think it would be kind of interesting to see um, the different things that people come up with when they are using the same references and the same ideas. I think it would be really fun to like do that kind of as a, an event or like a maybe like a new version of draw this in your style, like design this in your style, like use this mood board to design something. I don't know. We'll see what happens with it. But at the moment... I'm actually working on designing a new character. I don't know what I'm going to use her for, but I wanted to do this because in my new classes right now, I kind of had an eye-opening experience when I turned in my portfolios because I have one professor who told me that I needed to do more diverse things with my art. And so here I am trying to figure out like how I could mix up my art a little bit in my designs and I want to start by drawing more male characters and also expanding the type of body types that I am comfortable drawing. Because for the most part, I just draw girls with a very like conventional kind of attractive body type, I guess. Or I probably shouldn't use the word attractive. I guess like a conventionally skinny body type. And so with this new character design, I'm trying to challenge myself by giving her a different body type than what I'm like very used to drawing. And I, I hope that that is going to be a video later on in March. With the tutorials, though, I'm unsure exactly what type of tutorial I want to do. I've also been using Procreate a lot again, and I do want to do a draw with me on Procreate, but... I mainly use my iPad like when I'm sitting on the couch. Like when I draw on my iPad, I, I draw in very like crazy positions basically, which um, is pretty difficult to record. And so I'm struggling to just get footage of me drawing on the iPad. And I also just get really lazy because my drawing on the iPad is usually during my leisure time. And uh, I just like don't want to record during that because then it becomes work time. Um, I think people have been asking for a Procreate video, so um, maybe one day I will actually just sit down and draw and Procreate. But also, I've gotten some requests on trying out Krita, I think, or Medibang, whichever one, and maybe both, because I think they're both cheaper or free compared to Clip Studio Paint and Procreate, but that could be like a little fun challenge thing, because it, it's been a while since the last time I like really tried to use a different program in terms of 2d digital art 
And I'm also really interested in 3D modeling one of my characters, but I'm not sure if anyone would actually want to see that in a video. I don't even know how I, I would approach turning that into a video. I feel like it's just going to be really boring, to be honest, because it's going to be full of mistakes and frustrations. And I'm just going to be like, what am I doing? Yeah, honestly, I don't know. I'm just throwing out ideas out here because, to be honest, my brain is shutting down. I don't know what to talk about. So I'm like, uh, tutorials, uh, character designs, colors, whatever, topic, whatever. And with that, I'm also going to ask for your guys' help in choosing more podcast topics. I'm a bit more afraid to kind of actually lean into more non-art related stuff. Like I could talk about my favorite TV shows and stuff or my favorite video games, which ones I've played. But I'm kind of like nervous to see how um, people respond to that because... You know, I am an art channel, but at the same time, I have said that these podcasts are meant to get to know me as a person instead of as an artist. So comment if you have any ideas on what type of things you want me to talk about, because um, I just I really need an actual topic to talk about. But sometimes I guess like this video, I have one and then um. I only talk about it for 20 minutes and then I, I reach a point where I'm like, oh shoot, like I don't I don't know what to talk about about Percy Jackson anymore. Like what do I talk about now? And so yeah, I think this podcast is gonna be on the shorter side because I just I can't stretch this out to an hour. I don't know what else to talk about, but I'm gonna mention um the zine that I'm working on again because I will not be showing the finished piece in this video, so you're not going to see me color it. And if you're interested in seeing the finished piece, go check out Camp Sappho, the zine. Once again, the Camp Sappho magazine is going to be made up of a bunch of sapphic pairings from the Percy Jackson universe. There's going to be fan art, some fanfic, some poems and even merchandise, depending on which bundle you get. So if you check out the link below, you'll see that there's a PDF bundle, and then there's a physical bundle, and then there's a merch bundle. So please go check that out because you'll be supporting me, and you'll be supporting all the other artists that worked on it, all the other writers that worked on it, and all the mods who made it possible to even create this zine. So please, please, please go check that out, especially if you love sapphic things. So yeah, I'm going to sign off now because my mind is going blank. So see you guys next time and yeah, goodbye.